For today's video, I'm going to show you how with a compass and a straight edge, you can erect a perpendicular from a point on a line. Okay, so there is a point on any sort of a line. The first stage is go to the point P and put your compass there and then draw some sort of an arc. Okay, I'm going to go from this point here and I'm going to draw an arc that goes right around to here. Then from either ends of that arc, I'm going to make this compass a bit wider now. And I'm going to go up here and put an arc up here. And keeping the compass the same width, I'm going to go from the other end and do an arc like this. Now all I have to do is take my ruler and join up this point up here to my original point P and I will have formed a 90 degree angle. Okay, you can check it this way. Really what you've done is you've done the same sort of steps that I did yesterday with bisecting an angle except I'm bisecting a straight angle of 180 degrees. And that gives me a 90 degree perpendicular there. Now here's why it works. When I did my original arc like this, this side and this side became the same length. Then when I went and put my compass here and made that arc, and my compass here and made that arc, I made these two lengths the same. So that, that length became the same as this length. Now, of course, if I join up the middle here, sorry, if I join down the middle and go from here to here, this length is equal to both triangles. So in either triangle I have a side, side, side relationship. Okay, three sides of one equal to three sides of the other. So the two triangles are equal. That means this angle equals this angle and since they must add up to 180 they're both equal to 90 degrees. So you can write 90 degrees there or you can put the little symbol. So that's why it works. Now, for my second thing today, I'd like to show you how to drop a perpendicular from a point to a line. So here is my point P, and I'd like you to drop a 90 degree line right down to this line. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my compass and make it any sort of length and draw an arc like this. As long as it cuts it in two places, there we are. Okay, now I'm going to go and uh, making my compass keeping it the same length or changing it. So I'm going to change it a tiny bit. I'm going to draw an arc down here. Keeping it the same length, I'm going to go over to here and draw an arc down here that intersects the other. Okay, I didn't make the first one quite long enough so I'll make it a, a bit longer here. Here we are. Now all I do is take my ruler and go to the top point P and draw a line straight down here and it's going to hit right at 90 degrees. Okay. How do I know why it works? Well, here's the same construction down here. So this is why it works. My original arc meant that these two lines are the same. Then I went to here and made this arc, and there and made this arc, and that forces these two lines to be the same. Okay and they are equal to each other from there to there. 
So what I've done is this four-sided shape has uh, two sides that are adjacent equal and two other sides. We call that a kite. And yesterday we learned that the diagonals of a kite, which anyone who has built a kite knows, meet at 90 degrees. So there is my 90 degrees there. So that's why that works. Okay, now we're going to finish off this by doing uh, a couple of really neat constructions. And I urge you to watch right to the end because there's a bit of a surprise on the last one. So the first one is how to construct an equilateral triangle. And that's very easy. Put your point of your compass at say A, and make your compass any length, and put in an arc. Now keeping your compass that same length, go to the other end, and just put a little cross up here. Now just join that cross from here, down to A, and down to this point B here. Okay, and I'll call that C. What you've done is you've made this length equal to this length equal to this length. So there's an equilateral triangle. Okay, and in fact, since all angles of an equilateral triangle are 60 degrees, you have also learned how to do construct a 60 degree angle. Bisect it and you've got a 30. Bisect it again, you've got a 15. How to construct a square? Well, what we're going to do is use just what we have learned a few seconds ago. We're going to do an arc here. And two arcs above. up there and from here an arc up there and we're going to join those up and then we're going to do the same thing on B here arc arc and going above it do an arc up here and an arc up there so we are going to erect two perpendiculars on A and B Got to do the sound effects there too. So there's 90 and there's 90. Now to make sure that we get a square, I'm going to measure the length from A to B and go up here and put a mark. And go over here and put the same mark. Join that up. call that C and D and you'll have this side is equal to this side is equal to this side is equal to this side and you have four 90 degree angles and so you have a square okay now for my last one this one's fun how to construct a regular hexagon okay a regular hexagon means that all sides and all angles are the same. So I start by making a circle, and there's the center of the circle. I'll call it C. And then I'm going to go over here and put a little line. doesn't really matter where I put it. And I'm going to take my compass and keep it the same as the radius of the circle. So I'm going to go right out to that line from the center right out to this line here. Now all I do is I go to this point and copy that radius to there. And then I go up here and copy the radius again. And then I go to here and copy the radius again. So I'm just going to continue to copy these radiuses around the circle. 
copy the radius again down there and copy the radius again over here. Now if I've done it accurately, when I go to this last one and go to the copy the radius, it should meet exactly where I started from. Right up there. So in fact, a hexagon has six radiuses around the circle. So one radius, and now you can go to two radiuses, and now you can go to three radiuses, four radiuses, five radiuses, and six radiuses, and there you have your hexagon. Okay, what you've really done, if I join this to this, is you've made six equilateral triangles, and that's why it works. Now, the interesting thing is that I could say then that uh, the perimeter of the hexagon is equal to six radiuses. I made this radius here equal to this one, and 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 this one. So the perimeter equals six radiuses. Okay, now the perimeter of the circle, which we call the circumference, you can see is going to be a bit bigger than the six radiuses because I have to go on a curve each time. So the circumference of the circle is a bit bigger than six radiuses. As a matter of fact, I know it's 6.28 radiuses. Now how do I know it's 6.28? Well, 6.28 is 2 times 3.14. Aha! What is 3.14? But pi. So there's another way to show that the circumference of the circle is 2 times pi r. And that's the end of this.